Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we're starting a new project and it's a little bit different than you're used to, but I'm going to make a arm guard for archery and I'm going to just start by cutting some pieces of leather. Um, this is the overall shape I'm going to make. I'm going to pop on the screen what a arm guard is used for and let's just start with the base. I'm going to be using this piece of leather as my base with the inside going to be up against the arm and this is going to be my top that will be covered by this amazing um, I think it's a kind of stingray kind of fish. It has gorgeous reflective scales. And I'm also going to be using some silver. And I'm going to be using some brown leather. And this is going to be tooled. This is going to be this area. And it's going to have a design on it. And that's going to be probably the main part of this video. Show showing you how to tool leather. So let's just start by just cutting this out. So for now I'm going to start by just cutting out this side and that side. I'm going to leave these parts mostly on. So I just used a ballpoint pen to mark my design and I'm going to try and use this rolling blade to cut it out. And there you go. As you can see this is very sharp so if you have one please be careful. There's my base. So I just taped down my design onto the piece of leather I'm going to be using. I'm not going to be cutting this out before it's tooled because the leather might warp. So it's easier to work on a bigger piece. But for now, I'm just going to trace my design onto the leather just using a little tool. I'm going to be careful not to damage the paper, but I am pressing down quite hard because I need the lines to be on the leather. As you can see, it's going to leave a mark. I'm just going to be following all these lines. So I got my design on here. So let's take off the tape. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using my swivel knife. That's this one. It has a handle that, well, swivels. Uh, it's to rest your finger on when holding. And that way you can turn the blade and apply pressure at the same time. But we need to sharpen it a little bit. I'm just going to use a piece of cardboard and some jeweler's rouge. And I'm just going to add it to the paper. Like so. And then I'm going to pull my blade over the paper. And keeping the blade at the angle it's grinded to. As you can see, it's polishing the metal and therefore just sharpening the blade. It's not as sharp as a normal blade. It will not cut my finger, but it's going to cut the letter. But I think that should do. So this is just a very fine polishing material that's pressed into a bar. So normally you would uh, wet your letter and then mark the lines. But I want to try and do it dry. Let's start with an easy line. So let's start I think, with this one in the middle. I'm just going to place my blade. Keep my finger on top, use my fingers to twist and follow the line I made. There you go, this is what you get and I'll be doing that for the whole design. And then it's going to be ready for the stamping part. But first some carving up close. So I decided it would be a good idea to try a test piece um, because I haven't done any letter crafting for a while. So I got the piece and I just did the lines as I would do with the normal design with the swivel knife. And now I'm going to wet it because when you're doing letter crafting, you're supposed to work on wet leather. So I'm just using normal water and I'm going to let it soak into the leather a little bit. So it's going to turn a little bit dark. In the meanwhile, I'm going to pick my tool. So this is just a very small amount of the tools I've got for leather crafting. And in this case, I think I'm going to start by using this one. And what it does, it pushes down the leather, but because it's smooth, it shouldn't leave a mark. Uh, for example, if you would use one with 
the lines on it that's also the same kind of shape it will leave some marks on it so let's just start with this one normally i would leave this a little bit longer so the water can go into the leather make it soft but for now because i'm just trying to think how i want to tool this i'm just going to go for it and it's going to make a lot of noise and i'm going to use a wooden mallet you're not going to be able to see anything what i'm doing i'm gonna switch my camera angle okay so let's try it from this side you can see the water has gone into the leather a little bit more and i'm just going to put the longer edge of the bevel into my cut on the outside and i'm going to hit it with the hammer while moving it slowly to the side i'm just following the line i'm just going to do that all the way around just on the outside edge so what that gives me are these edges so i'm going to do that for the whole outside and then we'll move to the next part so i ended up doing all the lines and make sure you keep it wet not dripping but moist and as you can see i'm working on a special surface this is actually a piece of kitchen counter i found uh, on the street and you really need a piece of this uh, granite or marble or something otherwise you're not going to be able to do the leather stamping so i picked out three different stamps i want to try for the main and that's why i'm testing it out because i don't want to mess up the final design so let's do a little test piece on here to see what we get so this is what we got and i think i'm going with this one so that's the, the rounded one so let's try that on this part and i'm gonna put the rounded edge on the rounded edge on this side i think it gave a nice texture to that and let's try and add some lines on this side so i'm liking it i'm not loving it so I think that gave me the effect I wanted. So I'm going to be experimenting a little bit more with textures on this piece before we're going to go to the final one. So I'm really nervous because nothing I tried on my little extra piece worked out the way I wanted. But I'm just going to go for it. And I'm going to start with this area. And I think I'm going to be using a couple of different tools. But I'm going to start by just pushing it down. I'm really trying to keep inside of the lines, but my design is actually a little bit too small for the tools I own, so I should have thought about it. I'm sorry for the horrible camera angle, like I'm trying to work around it, but it's really hard, so I'm probably not going to be showing you a lot of the tooling because I really want this to come out nice, and therefore I need to be up close and personal with the letter. I'm not trying to just be in focus the whole time. But I think you get the point, you just use the stamps to push down the letter and it should stay down after it dries. So I'm gonna leave it at that and I'll show you when I'm finished with this design. So for the little buttons that are going to be going on the sides, to get the shape I just used the little cup and traced it. I'm going to use my little sharp pointy thing and I'm going to cut out the circles. Again be careful, it's a blade. And just go slow. So I'm going to just run my blade over it a couple of times and then it should be all the way through. So let's punch some holes and I've got this hole puncher. It's not the best but it will do and I made a tiny template that goes over the top that will show me where to punch the hole. So I already put an indent on here. So I'm going to do the same with the other one. I'm just going to place it over the top in the center and put that on here. Just press down. There you go. Got a nice little indent. So now I'm just going to put it on my little piece of leather and I'm going to smack it with a hammer. So close your ears. So that took me quite some hammering, but I got my holes and the holes are going to be filled with these little Chicago screws. So I'm just going to see if they fit. And it does. So I'm just going to put the backside on just for now so I don't lose them. So this is the screw part. But this is going to be the button. So on my design, it's going to be here. So let's see what's the next part. So I did the tooling and it's all done. And I really love how it worked out it is a little bit wet because i'm going to add a stain to it but i love how the design came out so i did a little test piece 
as you can see the dye doesn't change a lot but it does darken up the grooves so i'm using this stain by tendy leather and i'm just gonna shake it so it's going to get on the cap and then i'm taking a little sponge that i put some water on so it's wet i'm just gonna take the stain on the sponge just the amount that was in the cap and then i'm going to rub it over my design I want to make sure that it gets into all these little areas here. So sometimes it needs a little bit of a help. And that's why you wet down the leather before you start as well. Just to make it absorb the stain more evenly. I'm also adding it into this groove. But it's not going to show up because my uh, thread is going into that groove. But I just want to make sure that it's all nice and done. Right now it's, it's really thick. But I'm going to be shaving it down on the sides. It's time to let this dry. So I'm going to show you what I'll be using. It's this little tool. I've had it for ages. I don't know where I bought it, but I bend it in a little bit more of an angle just to make it easier to work on the leather. And it comes with this little two-sided blade. You just slide it on. So what we're going to be doing, because this piece is very thick overall and i'm going to add uh, several layers underneath and i need to be stitching it i don't want it to have this big of a, a side part because otherwise you're going to be getting stuck against it so what i want to do is i want to shave down these sides and probably the front and the back so the center piece is going to be still the full thickness but the sides i want to go down i'm just going to show you on my extra piece what it's going to look like and i'm just going to put the little blade on and pull so it's shaving just a really tiny amount but you can already see thickness has gone down so it's creating a slope. So I'm going to do that on the piece for all the sides. So I finished shaving down the shape. And I think I've got it to the right thickness on the sides. But I just want to uh, finish these edges. And I'm going to be using an edge beveler. So that's this tool. And I think... Well, it's from Tandy Leather. And I don't know. I think this is a 4. So what it does, it takes off the sharp corners on the side. So you just place it on and run it over. And it takes off... That little sharp corner there. So here it's pretty sharp. And here it's nice and rounded already. So I think that's all done. And now I want to finish off these edges. And I'm going to be using this little block. There should be a handle on here. But I lost it a while ago. It's a piece of plastic. But it has different roundings on here. And I think this should fit in the center one. So like that. And what you can do with it is you take some beeswax or leather wax take a little bit put it on your edge that should be enough and then you run this over it just like that just keep doing it it takes a little while but what it does it makes your edges round so by doing this you can make a really nice edge and the friction actually seals off the leather so I'll be doing that all around and then I think it's time to put some holes in here. So just to show you, unfinished, finished, rough, smooth. So it's time for the nerve wracking part and that's actually cutting out this really nice leather. And I'm just really nervous that I'm going to mess it up, but I'm just going to try. Uh, so let's just start by doing this area and I want to try my rotary knife and see if it works. So keep my fingers crossed. So it is cutting. Let's try a blade. It's just not cutting. So back to this one. Let's try a piece here. So this is so hard to cut because of the scales on here and it's actually just not going through. Let's take this off, take some scissors, so it's not too too bad but it's not nice and even. I think it's a better idea to make the pieces a little bit bigger and then just cut it after it's glued to the base because this is just 
you can hear it's really hard and um, because of their irregular shape it's really hard to cut so i'm gonna try and cut this as best as i can so uh, it will fit the shape i'm gonna just glue it onto the base and trim it after so yeah let's try and get this done so i thought it would be fun to just do a secret message on the back of my little piece so i've heated up my heat tool and let's just burn it in I'm scared of this next phase and that's gluing the pieces together because it's so final and I'm going to be using this glue this is contact glue so you put it on both sides let it dry and then press it together so I'm just using a piece of plastic to put the glue on I'm just going to put it hopefully in the right spot it is a bit goopy you don't want to mess this up because once it's on there it's on there as you can see it's really really messy stuff and I'm going to stitch this together as well, but I really want it to stay together. That's why I'm using the glue. Because I took out the center, it moves. And with the template, I'm going to know it's going to be in the right spot. Okay, so this can dry. I'm just going to put a layer on here as well. And when it's dry, you can put the two pieces together. So let's let it dry. So it is dry. You can touch it and it doesn't stick. I put some clamps on so it stays on the right place. And now... Let's try and put the top part on. I'm just going to press it down. And now I'm just going to put something heavy on top. So first I'm going to take something smooth because I don't want to damage my design. So I'm just going to put it like so. And then put a weight on it and let it sit for a couple hours. And then we're going to be putting the whole piece onto the base. I think it's ready to go on to my base. So I just clipped it on to here and I'm going to release that. Don't need that anymore. Let's just see it's going to be going on to here. But I think this is fine. So what I need to do now is put glue on all of this and here. So I put it on, let it dry. And now comes the tricky thing. And that's putting the two together. And I think I'm going to go like so. So at least this side will fit. I'm going to turn it around because it's stuck on this side already. I don't know if you can see. I'm just going to try and lower it. Okay, I think we got it. It's pretty straight, but at least it's now all stuck together. And I'm just going to leave it to dry for 24 hours because if I would go and stitch this now, the glue would still be tacky and that would grip the thread and that will make stitching so hard so let's do some holes so this is what i'm going to be using to do the stitching with and as you can see it, the needle has a groove down this side and a short one on this side uh, i will show you why later but this has to go through all these pieces and to do so without damaging the piece i need to make my holes beforehand so i've got two options one is this all if you make a hole it makes them round then i've got this little crafty tool and that actually has a chiseled edge that is pretty sharp and it's flat so when you make holes with that one you get less of a disturbance in the leather and it looks a lot neater but the needle will still fit through the hole pretty easily so what we need to do is try and carefully make the holes in that little edge and it also needs to be on a slight angle because the edge isn't completely straight and we want to go through all three of the pieces so let me show you on the piece itself so already done a couple i did these a little bit closer together because this part really needs to be securely down because this is going to be an edge but these i did a little farther apart from each other so i'm just going to do the next one just going to put it here on the angle and hit it with the hammer feel if it's through it's not now it is so then i just take it out and i'm ready to do the next one so i finished all of the holes and now i'm ready for stitching i prepared my little tool by threading the needle and i'm going to keep the whole little roll on here because i don't want to run out for the black because i want to have black on the underside i took a piece that is about three times the length 
and hopefully that's going to be enough. I made the mistake many, many times. And I just added a long needle on the end and made a knot because I don't want it to come off. I don't need it to go through anything tight so I can keep the knot on the end. I think I want to start here because that will give me a little bit of room to finish off the ends. And what I do, I just go through the hole I made with the little tool, insert it so it's on the other side. Hopefully you can see. And then what you do is you pull back. So that creates a loop on this side. And that's where you want to put your other thread through. So I'm just going to put it through the hole and I'm going to pull it all the way and leave a big chunk on this side. And then I carefully pull back. And what I do is I pull on the silver thread and keep tension on the black until this little silver dot goes away. And you don't want to pull too hard because you don't want the black to appear on the other side. So let's do another one. I'm just going to go through the second hole I made, going to the other side, pulling it back, going through with the black and then going back out. And this time, because I didn't have enough tension on the black, it pulled through to this side. So what I'm going to do is pull till the black goes away and no silver is on this side. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing for the whole piece. I've been working on this for a couple of days. Uh, I didn't want to bore you with how I made the sides because it was just the same punching of holes, then just sewing the two edges together. Then I just put in the elastic and it's actually just an elastic shoelace that I used because this is a lot nicer and softer than the original elastic I was planning to use. This is really sturdy, but it's really bulky and it's not really nice for the skin. So I decided to go with the shoelace and I put a little ring in the center and put the two ends crossing over and then squash the ring so the two ends are just secured together it's not gonna move and I punched a couple of holes it's really hard to show you that's why I didn't film it for you but there's a hole in here maybe you can see it from this side here you can see there's a hole right in there and that's where the shoelace is coming out from so it doesn't pull the sides of the uh, leather it goes out and that's how you're going to be securing it and I just screwed on the little uh, buttons so nothing special but now I want to finish these edges and I'm going to be doing that with a special stitch and I've been practicing it's going to look something like this I think it's going to look really pretty but to do so I'm going to be just punching a bunch of holes in the sides I'm going to start with just this side and when I've done that I'll show you how to do this little stitch so I punched the holes. I did one side one way facing this way. The other way I did the other side. But first we're going to be stitching on this row. And I just started by going through the first hole. And I'm going to pull the end to the back. And I'm going to keep it long just in case. Then I'm going from the back to the front to the second hole. Pulling it through. Then as you can see I made a little cross. And I'm going to go from the front to the back underneath that cross like so i'm going to go to the third hole again going from the front to the back that will create a new cross hope you can see go underneath that cross pull it through come back to the front pull it through creating a new cross right here i'm just going to stick my needle underneath pull it through and i'll just continue that all the way down to this side and that will create a border so i'll show you when the first little part is done so i'm just going to show you this is with this is without and the next time you're going to be seeing this we will have a final reveal so here's the final reveal and i'm absolutely in love with this piece this letter is so cool look at that sparkle i want to thank you for watching and i hope to see you in the next one bye everyone